Hello, my friends. I hope you're having a good day. This is Dr. Renee Tucker, equine veterinarian for over 25 years now, and also the creator of Tucker Biokinetic Technique, or TBT. I mention that because I'm going to mention that in my story today, which I hope you'll love as much as I do. <laughs> okay. Today we're talking about antibiotics, particularly as they pertain to hoof abscesses. All right, many people may know that anti means against and biotics comes from the word bios, meaning life. So antibiotics are against life. And in fact, they affect our entire system and work against things that are living and should be living in us. I feel like the general public may think, no, 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 Renee, you're wrong there. It's anti-life, but only the bad guys. But actually, no, it's not only the bad guys. Antibiotics, you know, they work against bacteria and fungi and spirochetes in some cases, okay, but they are also working against your immune system, which is your T cells, B cells, lymphocytes, phagocytes, macrophages, you know, all those fun guys. They kill all those. I say, well, isn't that just what we have to deal with in order to kill the bad stuff? Well, no, actually, that's why we have an immune system. So that our immune system, even all those little characters that I just mentioned, T cells, B cells, etc., they go and collect stuff that should not be in our body and get rid of it. And that is exactly what an abscess is. As I'm sure you know, unless you don't, uh, if, well, if you've been lucky enough to have a horse without an abscess, they can get them in their feet and they're quite painful primarily because the abscess it's it's a big pus pocket really of bacteria and all those white blood cell guys that are working to get rid of something all right sometimes it's a bruise situation we had a bruise and then it kind of turns into an abscess as the body's trying to clean it out Sometimes there might be a foreign body in there, or sometimes dirt gets wedged up and cracks. You just don't know, but there's abscesses and the body's trying to get rid of it. So why am I bringing this up? Well, because I'm mad about something. <laughs> All right, here's what happened. My whole life as a veterinarian, if the horse has a hoof abscess, well, we typically use warm water and Epsom salts and soak the foot. The warm water brings circulation and it should be very warm, guys. I know some people just kind of use room temperature water. It should be as close to hot as you can get it. And sometimes you might have to start with uh, lukewarm and maybe carry a teapot and keep getting that water really, really warm, All right, We want as much warm as possible. And then the Epsom salts is a drawing agent, so which means it draws stuff out, which is what the body's trying to do anyways. Okay, that's what you should do. Warm water and Epsom salts, soak the foot about 20 minutes. I understand sometimes horses do not tolerate buckets or any kind of putting their foot in something. Then you have to use the old standby of diapers and duct tape. Okay, so you, soak that diaper, which can absorb an amazing amount of water, and then put the Epsom salts in that as well, and duct tape it on your horse. And it uses that as a drawing agent too. It's slower. Soaking is better. Okay, you guys may already know that. Here's what happened though, is I ran across someone who said her horse had an abscess, and you know, it keeps kind of going away and then coming back and going away and coming back. And I was wondering, well, what's going on here, right? Because sometimes that does seem to happen, but you don't know, well, is it really going away and coming back or is it another one? And what's going on? In her case, her veterinarian, who shall be nameless, <laughs> put her on antibiotics and butte for an abscess. And I said, Wait a minute, did he know there was an abscess? Oh yeah, yeah, he hoof tested him and blah, 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 blah. It told me it's an abscess and here's my antibiotics in butte. I'm like, what in the ever loving? This makes no sense. An abscess is the body trying to get stuff out. What's trying to get stuff out? The white blood cells in the immune system. What do antibiotics do? 
kill white blood cells in the immune system. And then Butte just tells the horse there's no pain and it's an anti-inflammatory. The key here is people and veterinarians now at this point apparently just want to fix things temporarily rather than look at what's the real problem. And the other thing, maybe even more importantly, is that people, we don't want to be in pain and we cannot stand seeing our animal in pain. And I 100% agree. I don't either. The thing is, pain won't kill you. We've been conditioned in our society, at least here in the Western world, if it hurts, get something. OMG, get some antibiotics, get some steroids, get some uh, anti-inflammatories of some kind because what, we, don't, we don't do pain. Are you kidding me? And you're saying, oh, really? no, duh, no one wants to do pain. But we have to take care of it, blah, blah, blah. Listen, let me tell you my gross story of my own personal tooth abscess. You're just going to love it. Okay, look, yes, a couple years back, I had a tooth abscess. I know what it was, but I am maybe the top most stubborn person in the world because I'm not going to go to the dentist. They're just going to give my antibiotics and they're going to want to, if it doesn't clear up right away or if it keeps coming back, they pull the tooth out. Like, I'm not doing that. Okay, so I don't do that. And I go online and I look for natural remedies. I'm doing all these things, right? There is indeed warm water and Epsom salts and other things you swish in your mouth, gargle. There's cloves that you can use. Um, what else? Oil pulling, all kind of fun things. I'm doing all these and they all help a little bit. And you know what? It hurts. I'm sure some of you have had a tooth abscess. It hurts tremendously. And I'm thinking, oh crap, I really don't want to go. <laughs> I just stubborn my way out of it and it's really hurting. Now look, I am blessed enough that I could reschedule my appointments and just do my online portion of my work when I could, okay? Because it really hurts. I understand that some people may well be in a situation where you got to get to work. You can't be in pain for a tooth that's, you know, not acceptable, right? So my point is, this is what I did. And everyone's got to do what you got to do. So I was stubborn. I did the natural stuff, and which does help a little bit, but it was really painful. One night, it was so painful. I swear, I think it took about a week. It was so painful, it woke me out of a deep sleep. I'm like, oh my gosh. And my whole head felt like it was throbbing. It was, it's awful. Pain is awful. And then, dude, listen, I went to the bathroom and it had swollen on my gum and you could kind of see that it was uh, ready to go. You could see a little uh, weak spot, a little yellowish spot. Well, I pushed on it and it hurt like unbelievable, but it busted open. <laughs> And it was disgusting. It was so gross and so wonderful because it it released all the pain and all the stuff, whatever it was, and my body was trying to get out from under my tooth. It went out the side of my gum. It was freaky, honestly. I didn't even know that could really happen. But the body will do amazing things to get stuff done. So that was it. It just busted open. That was the end of it. Kind of swished my mouth out and that's done. Tooth is fine, all is well. Part of me wonders if um, my body was trying to get rid of the rest of the mercury from the mercury am amalgams. I had gotten those removed several years back, but you know, you can't. It's hard to get all of it out, particularly stuff that's gone down to the root. But that's a side story. So, in the case of horses and abscesses, please do not give butan antibiotics. It's absolutely counterproductive. You want that abscess to come to a head, which is going to be painful. And then when it's ready, then you can, well, often the horse will just keep walking and they'll just bust out on its own. Sometimes you might have to have a vet or farrier help with that. Although, honestly, I don't recommend it because generally they tend to dig a really giant hole to get to it, which, you know, they feel they have to. But if you could avoid that, it'd be better because all that has to grow out. You know, and then it's such a pain to keep it all wrapped up while it's open there. Let me tell you about this thing I did one time. Okay, shh, don't tell people. It was an experiment, you know? Okay, there was a horse. He had an abscess. Bad, you know, the kind where they're just 
barely touching their toe and limping like their whole leg is broken because they don't want to put any weight on their foot. Hey, since having that tooth abscess, I know what they're feeling. It's awful. But the point is, he's eating, he's drinking, he's okay. He's just not putting any weight on that foot. And he was one of those guys, you could not soak him. You, he was just impossible to deal with. Frankly, looking back, I bet you he had ulcers because he was so horrible to deal with. Long story short, here's what I did. Well, we couldn't do anything else and it was dragging on. So what I did was I blocked the foot because you could see that it was a little, not a little, it was, it was fairly swollen on the back of the coronary band there. And most abscesses in the foot come out the bottom. Some come out the coronary band. His was coming out the coronary band. You could see it was like squishy. You know, if you could just get to it, it was going to pop right out. But you couldn't. But I managed to block the foot. Right. So um, if you're not familiar with that, that's where veterinarians will stick uh, lidocaine, which is like Novocaine at the dentist, in, into the area by the nerves to the foot. So I blocked both sides of the foot so he couldn't feel his foot. Like I said, and it's an experiment, okay? And so he, you could see him. He put his foot down like a few times, barely touching it, thinking, you could see him thinking, wait a minute, my foot doesn't hurt. So he started walking on it. He walked, I swear, less than five steps, and that abscess bursted out, gushed out like 10 feet. Oh my gosh, it was so disgusting and so awesome because my plan worked. And yes, that's the only thing we had to do. Hey, listen, I don't recommend this, all right? But it is an option if your horse is absolutely intractable. And you can see and or somehow know the abscess is ready to burst out. Because like me pushing on my own abscess and it just busted open, he was literally pushing on his own abscess and it busted right open. But he wasn't going to do it because it hurt too much. I helped him. See? Okay. That's not in vet school. That was just my own little idea. I have only did it that one time. Uh, the rest of the time we just soak. That's it. We just soak them. All right. My point is, do your very, very best to avoid antibiotics. They're killing the good stuff as well as the bad. And plus, they harm the liver and the kidney as they're trying to filter them. Okay. They're bad. We kind of all kind of know this but we I swear our society is just like well you got an abscess you you do good antibiotics that fixes it it's not fixing it it's really not the body has to figure out another way or they'll just wall off the infection because they can't get enough get a, get rid of the stuff parts of their system over there that can wall it off they'll come back later They'll have to do something, but antibiotics aren't fixing it. It's just like stalling. And it's, other things will happen if you don't let the body clean it out. Okay. It might hurt. They'll be okay. The horse will be okay. As long as you're, you know, monitor, guys. Use some common sense. And I realize, as always in my podcast, there's extremes. There's things outside the norm. Avoid antibiotics if you can do your best to avoid them you can use natural antibiotics if you google literally natural antibiotics there's many products now that you can get they contain things such as oil of oregano um, apple cider vinegar honey turmeric garlic echinacea cloves cinnamon golden seal the list goes on of herbal items that can help and they will support the immune system and that's what you want is to support the immune system who is doing the best job possible okay i think that's it i hope you hadn't get too disgusted with my awesome stories and you certainly hope i certainly hope that you were not listening to this while you're eating all right i should have said that at the beginning sorry about that i'll try next time all right thanks for listening and i'll talk to you guys later Bye bye